Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how I learned to jam in any key. How I learned to improvise in any key along with any song that, especially songs that stay in a key, but you can do it in songs that even go out of a key a little bit. But amazing, valuable thing to know how to do if people are jamming and you say, hey, what key is it in? Major or minor, you can know how to jam in it with just a little bit of information. So what I'm gonna show you here is the scale form that is the most common, this is how I learned it. And then you can branch out from there, learn more shapes, learn all kinds of other things. And early on in this process, if you are early in this process, don't worry about sounding awesome. Don't worry about playing an epic guitar solo. Don't worry about it being the best thing ever. Just get the principles down for, okay, technically these are the notes that exist in this key. And I found it on the fretboard and now I can start playing notes and listening for how it works with the backing track, for example, which is how we're gonna practice it in this video. So here's the shapes you need to know. Here's the most common shape for guitar scales that you very likely have encountered already. This is a pentatonic scale and I'm playing it with my first finger on the fifth fret off of A. If that is the root, this A, if that's the root, then I'm playing A minor pentatonic. The way to make it feel minor is to emphasize that note a bunch. This is A, this is A, this is A. Come back to that a lot if you want it to feel minor. Same exact collections of notes. Wherever your pinky is lined up with, in this case, this note is C. So right here in this fifth position of playing this, if this is the root of the key, if the key is in C major of the song, chord progression, whatever you're playing with, then that is the root. And to make it sound more major, you just come back to that a lot. That's C, that's C, that's C. Right? So if the key, if the song is in C, then that's exactly where you're gonna play that. We're gonna practice this more in a second to be able to make sure we find it anywhere. But already we can play in a minor key. If that's the root, we can play in a major key. If this is the root, let's add to this a little bit. You can turn this into the blues scale by adding this note, also something you're likely uh, aware of, and if not, welcome to the <laughs> welcome to the game, where we can uh, noodle on this for the rest of our lives, and kind of always sounds good. That's why people do that. So, and of course, danger zone that we get stuck in doing that and not practicing other things and getting out of our comfort zone and breaking through plateaus. But it is super fun to play with, so it's a great thing to know. Uh, so the blues note is here, it's here, and you add that in to exactly that collection of notes, you have the blues scale. If this is the root, it's the A minor blues scale. If this is the root, it's the C major blues scale. Same collection of notes. If the key is A minor, you can just play with that scale in this position. If the key is C major, play with the same scale in the same position, and this is the root. If that's not making sense yet, we're gonna specifically practice it all over the place in a second. We need to add more notes though to fill out the scale into what's called a diatonic scale a complete seven note scale, all the notes that exist in the actual key. We're going to add this note right here. And we're gonna add, I played it for a second, this note here. We're gonna add these two notes. Playing them together is very dissonant. And that's just sharing that on purpose here because the point of taking them out when we play the pentatonic scale, those two notes are not in there, so we don't, we're removing dissonance. That's why the pentatonic scale is so tasty and so smooth. Almost anything you play sounds lyrical because it doesn't have this, um, these half steps in there. It doesn't have this tritone interval in there, which is what this is called. But in any case, don't worry about all, any of that and just work on this. your scale form to know, yes, we're gonna move it all around the fretboard, but here it is, a seven note scale. If this is the root, then it's minor. One, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, six, flat, seven, one, two, flat, three, four, five, flat, seven, one. And if this is the root, then it's major. One, two, three, two, one, seven, one, seven, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la, ti, do. So, same notes major key or minor key. This is called relative major, relative minor. You don't have to remember all that. I just want you to have the hands-on practi practical uh, knowledge for how to apply this to any key. We're really close. What do we need to do? We need to know, or at least be able to find note names along the sixth string. This is E, so therefore this 12th fret is E. This is A, maybe you know that from tuning, A, open A. 
do whatever you need to do to find the rest of the rest of the notes. That's not what this lesson is about, but you can even look them up. You can study them in whatever way. This is G, this is G flat, this is F, this is F sharp, also G flat, this is A, so this is A flat, et cetera. They're just, you, we need to map those out. Then you just line up the right finger with the shapes we just talked about with whatever key you're in. If you're gonna jam in G minor, what do you do? You find G and then you apply any of the three scale forms we just learned. Pentatonic, blues, uh, the full diatonic scale, and your first finger's lined up with it. And I'm kind of mixing between a little bit of blues, a little bit of full scale, a little bit of uh, pentatonic. You can just rapidly choose those notes or not those notes if you're playing in G minor. And yes, chords are gonna be moving under you if you're playing over a song progression, but just jump in, try, see what sounds good, see what doesn't sound good. We're gonna do it in a second. You'll hear me jamming on a backing track. Um, if the key is major, then let's say it's E flat major. What do you gotta do? You gotta find E flat. Here's E flat right here. You gotta take these physical scale forms we just learned, apply your pinky lining up with it, and play any of them. You're playing an E flat major now. Okay, so I'm just playing around whatever. Don't don't you don't need to be playing that fast. I'm just kind of noodling with the scale. Work towards whatever sounds good to you. You don't have to like the way I'm playing it, but those are the correct notes in a key. So this is how a lot of guitar players who are jamming away and having a blast doing it learned how to get into it from exactly this method. Yes, you can do it with other scale forms, other scale shapes, but getting used to it with this one is kind of a tried and true initial way to get into it. So I already have queued up here a YouTube backing track. Just use YouTube, it has everything, you know, any backing track, any style, any tempo, any key. Just make up things and quiz yourself. So what I have here, is country jam track in C major. Let's press play and see what happens. Oh, but of course, let's find C major. That's the C note. It happens to be where we mapped out our scale. C note needs to line up with the pinky of our scale forms, and then we can jam around and just listen. And even if you just play the scale up and down, you're hearing kind of how the notes, like, yeah, these are the notes that fit in this key, in this song. And let me say one more thing before we demonstrate. Do not be intimidated by the term improvisation. Improvisation, you're doing it every time when you talk, when you make choices. It doesn't have to sound good. It just means you're not given an exact path. I'm technically improvising. I'm just going, da, da, chose that note, chose that note. No one's telling me what to play, so I'm gonna play, how about this? I'm improvising, right? So don't let it, it doesn't mean you played a, a awesome solo. It just means you're improvising. You're choosing what you do in the moment. The, 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 this, this, this. I'll go here, now here, now here, now here, now here, now here, now here. Da, 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 da. Keep it light, keep it, keep it fun for yourself, keep it easy for yourself, and then the good sounding stuff will slowly emerge. Um, the stuff that you feel really sounds good. Let's play this. All right. Oh, let's jump in with the scale. of the scale a lot, that's C. If in doubt, kind of come back to that a lot to end your phrases. Pentatonic. Blues. Full scale. Pause this. Super fun. I want you to have fun like that. I want you to get work towards that. 
And everything you learn in one scale position, even if for years you don't learn how to do it other places, you're learning a depth of knowledge just via practice for how do I make it sound good? How do I rhythmically, where do I pause? What's my phrasing, which is kind of like where you pause, where you play? What's, uh, how's my tone? Do I like it? Am I gonna slide into notes? All that stuff carries with you to other scale forms and positions. You don't need to learn how to play all over the neck to like as your first thing before making it sound good. So you can work on making it sound good in just this uh, this one scale. And what sounds good is totally subjective. You get to decide. It could be really nice and slow at first. Okay, so let's do another key. Let's do, um, how about, we said G minor, so G minor jam track um, in whatever style. Let's say G minor key jam track rock. Why not? See what happens. And then of course you're gonna have a million options. Tasty rock backing track in G minor, here we go. Okay, let's see what happens with this one. I haven't listened to it yet. Um, I'm just going to try to play with it. So sometimes you might find one that doesn't quite sound right because maybe the jam track goes out of the key in a way that doesn't work for you or it's just not the style you want. That's okay. Just explore around and save the ones you like to play with and just have fun trying all kinds of keys. Here we go. G minor. Not my style really I, I play it with a pretty clean style i'm playing acoustic guitar right now the first one j jived with me more but it was still fun to find oh can i can i mesh with this can i work with this um and it's pretty simple what's going on here right it was a minor key so i lined up my first finger with it and played with all that stuff just tried major key line up your pinky with it wherever it is whatever it is and just Go for it. Give it a try. Try a bunch of them. Um, I did play something when I was jamming over here. I started doing some stuff, do, 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 like connecting between notes. So if you notice that, the concept is very simple. I just went from this note in the scale to this note in the scale and played notes in between. Not saying you should do that, just addressing that I did that for a second because that's a little bit part of my style. So it's a note for all of us that you can play anything you want. And knowing the quote unquote good notes is nice to come back to. You can actually explore out of them and play, play notes in between other notes, especially if it's quickly, and it'll sound pretty in, pretty good, depending on the backing track and the chord that you're on. So this is your introduction, maybe, or maybe you've been doing it for a while, but this is how I learned to jam in any key. Lead guitar, blue scale, major scale, minor scale, pentatonic scale, whatever, move it wherever it's supposed to go, find the root, line it up with the right finger, and go to town. You can jam with anybody. And it's just such a window into speaking the language of music with anyone in the world. Uh, where, hey, you know how to jam and we're in this key. Let's go, let's play, you know? Uh, and so, yes, if you're gonna play rhythm, you might need to learn some more information. You might need to learn chords through keys. Check out uh, my last couple of videos if you're interested. I talk a little bit about chords through keys so you know the chords that exist in a key. But as far as lead playing, jamming, jamming with backing tracks, sounding good this way, it just takes time doing it, trying stuff, figuring out what you like, avoiding what you don't like, having fun along the way. And this is uh, a way that many, 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 many guitarists have learned this. So last little warning to not get too stuck in this, unless you're happy. If you're happy doing, do what you want to do, but don't get too stuck in this. Don't just only get good at this and then just do it forever because it sounds good. And when you work on other stuff, it doesn't sound good yet and it's hard. So therefore we just go back to noodling in this kind of thing and it sounds good. That's That happens to people from teaching guitar for a long, long time. I was helping a lot of players. My specialty kind of became helping players who have been playing for years, sometimes up to 20 years, kind of break out of their plateau who just kind of figured out something like this that sounds good and then never got past that. So continue to challenge yourself after you learn this, but 
really fun thing to be able to know to jam with any other musician. So hope you found that helpful. If you want uh, some diagrams of scales, if you want to learn more scales or just have a visual of these with you, I have a scale pack called my Printable Parent Scales PDF. It's totally for free. You can download it with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. It shows actually seven different scale types in five different positions each. So you can start learning even more. It shows where the roots are, and all you got to do is line up the roots with the key. So you could start doing this with more uh, positions at some point with that resource or just use the one that we did here, which is in there, of course, as well. So if you need that resource to uh, practice with and you like having something visual in front of you, it's free for you. Hope you get it if you want to. And I post a new lesson video every single week. So thanks for watching this one. Hope to see you in another one soon. Take care and happy practicing.